Man, y'all already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life and we're back. Shorty want to be a thug. Dudes go to prison, man, and they try to fit in. They try to click up with people that in the real world would never accept them. In the real world would never be caught dead around them. In the real world wouldn't even speak to them. But they find themselves in prison. These seem like the dudes I need to kick it with. And usually, the dudes will let you kick it. But not because you're cool. Nah. Not because y'all got anything in common. Uh-uh. It's because you got something to offer to them. Always be cautious. Always question what the next man's motive is. Even to this day with me being home, I question people. I always think somebody's got an ulterior motive. Somebody comes to me about one thing, my mind starts racing. It goes into overdrive thinking about what they really might be after. What's his real motive? Why is he talking to me? A dude don't rock with me like that. Why is he over here speaking to me? You gonna see a whole lot of dudes that don't fit where they're hanging out in prison. And it almost always ends bad. In the end, when you see them take the fall, or you see whatever happens is going to happen, it makes sense. Oh, that's why they let him kick it. Oh, that's why they had him around. But he didn't see that coming. So today we're going to touch on trying to fit in. Sure, they want to be a thug. Hanging with people that you shouldn't hang with. Being used. Being somebody's crash test dummy. <laughs> Happens every day and it's always going to happen. Because dudes are just too stupid to see what's really going on. You know I'd have seen it. You know I'd have lived it. So let's relive it. As a youngin, I had to learn things the hard way. I can't sit here and act like I haven't ever fallen into that category. When I was young, I was green. Green man, I was new to the jail. I knew the detention center ways and how everything ran in there. The jail, it's like you graduated. It's like college. You know what I mean, and then when you go off to prison, it's like you've left community college and went to some big college. But jail is nothing more than, than, than college, you know, for criminals. I'm 19 years old at the time, and I get locked up. When I come in, there's a whole lot of Puerto Rican dudes. And I stay fairly tan. Wintertime, summertime, even in the winter, I hold a tan. It's because it's in my blood. Dudes, I come in, they start, you know, screaming that, that, that Puerto Rican shit, thinking I'm reeking. I'm not reeking. I tell the dude, yo, I'm not, I'm not Puerto Rican, man. Hey, you look Puerto Rican, what are you? And I tell him, whatever, whatever, right? Well, that's what's up, that's what's up. They all flock to me. We all start to kick it. My celly told me, my celly at the time, I got a new celly real fast, that dude at home. But my celly at the time told me, he said, hey, man, watch the people you have around you. He said, look, don't be borrowing nothing from nobody. Don't be owing nobody nothing. And definitely don't hold nothing for nobody. If you're holding it, there's a reason you're holding it. And that's because they don't want to get caught with it. They're trying to get you to hold something. And of course, they're going to break you off and pay you. And you're going to feel like it's beneficial to you. And these are your homeboys and you're looking out. But when shit hits the fan, they're all going to step back. like, And it's just going to be you going down. All right, all right. I don't listen to dude, right? Pay him no mind. And he gave me the game. Gave it to me for free. You know, schooling me. Not listening. The Rican dudes at the time controlled all the cigarettes. They had a guard bringing them in. And they had more cigarettes than they knew what to do with. Whole packs. Newport 100s. And they had them spread out with different dudes throughout the pod. That way, if one guy got caught off, everything wasn't in one place... There was still more. You got to summon this cell, summon this cell, summon this cell. So if they shake him down and catch, you know, him with two packs, 
Ty, you still got 10 packs spread out through five other sales, right? I've been smoking with these dudes for a while. And they would just come up and be like, what's up, are you trying to smoke? And I'd be like, yeah, yeah. First sign that things wasn't right is they'd be like, all right, let's go to your cell. They wanted to go to my cell and smoke. That way, if the guards smelled it, it would be my cell getting shook down. It would be me taking the heat. All of them would be over in their cells looking, smelling like cigarettes, but it would be me being harassed, right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, wait till the guards come through and do their count. Because after they come, well, do their rounds. After they come through and do their rounds, you might not see them for another two, three hours. But every now and then, they'll do a round five minutes later, pop up again and just come in there and just be nosy, just walking around, right? Dude says, hey, let's go smoke in your cell. I said, I bet. Wait till they do their rounds. I did the rounds. We go to my cell, me, him, and like two of his homeboys. Pulls out the lighter and goes to another cell where he's got the lighter band, but they had several lighters. Lights up this new port. We pass the new port around, smoking the new port in the cell, right? Then we take the baby powder, fluff the baby powder container, and it puts baby powder in the air and then shake the towel. And the baby powder scent, we thought, killed the smell of the cigarette smoke. And for the most part, it did, right? This would take place for a while, two, three times a day. Anytime dude wanted to smoke, he knew if he was going to smoke it myself that I had to get in. Hey, Jay, what's up? You trying to smoke? Yeah, that's what's up. Same routine. We wait for the guard to come through. The guard would leave. All right, come on, boom. we shoot over to my cell. We'd smoke. Soon as, I mean, like the moment the cigarette was out, everybody would disperse and leave my cell smelling like smoke, right? By now, I'm thinking, all right, these are my dudes, man. These dudes kicking with me, you know what I mean? We're always smoking together. We joke together. Laugh together, sit out in the day room, watch TV together. We meet a lot of times together. These are my people. I'm not really seeing what's going on. I'm not seeing that they need me. I serve a purpose. We just haven't gotten there yet. So he comes to me one day and he's like, come on, man, let's let's take a walk real quick. And the guard had just come through and he's like, come on, let's go to your cell. So we shoot up in my cell and he's like, here. Hands me like three new parts. He's like, take these, take these, take this lighter. I say, yo, good looking, man. What do I owe you? Oh, you don't owe me nothing. Just do me a favor. Hold these packs for me, man. All right. Just, you know what I mean? Don't get them tore off, but hold these packs. I said, the fuck you want me to do with them? He said, look, he done pulled the cellophane, stuck a magnet inside of them that you could take out your headphones, and you could crawl up underneath your bunk all the way in the back and stick them up underneath the bunk. And that's a blind spot. If a guard lifts the blanket and looks under there, they can't see it. It's very hard to find it unless you crawl under there. So now, anytime he smokes, same thing. He comes through. I might go to him and be like, hey, I'm going to smoke one of them cigarettes. Oh, like, go ahead. Go ahead, Jay. You good. You good. So now I'm smoking lovely, right? I'm not looking at the downside of how bad this can end if I get caught with these cigarettes inside this jail. We're all in there smoking one day. And we look up. And one of the main officers comes walking in. We call them white shirts. One of the white shirts comes walking in. He's got two other officers with him. And they're just walking randomly through there, through the pod, looking at cells. This dude's the big dog. He's making sure everything's in order. Well, when they walk in, we are in the middle of smoking a cigarette in my cell. It is smoky in my cell. Every cell smells the same. And then you get to my cell and it smells like people been hot boxing cigarettes in there, right? So, boom, they hit the cigarette, watch, and they look in, everybody slides out. I'm stuck with the cell that stinks like cigarettes. What do you think I do? Get the hell up out of there. I ain't standing in there, right? So I peel out the cell, go over to the phone like I'm on the phone, get on the phone, stand there, pretend I'm talking to somebody, and I see them walk by my cell. And they look in, and they get about three cells down, and the white shirt stops. And he starts backpedaling. And he looks into my cell. Who lives in cell 20? I said, oh, man, here we go. I don't even know if it was cell 20. I don't remember what the cell was. We're just going to say 20. Who lives in cell 20? Act like I don't hear him, right? Who lives in cell 20? My cell, he's sitting out there with his headphones on, watching TV. Somebody walks up and taps. He's like, yo, they want you. Dudes are always do this. Hey, Jay, the people want you. Oh. <sighs> So I act like I hang up the phone and go over there. Yeah, what's up, man? Where the cigarettes at? 
with cigarettes. Come on, man, don't play me like I'm stupid. I walk to this jail every single day. The jail smells a certain way. I walk by your cell and all we smell is cigarettes. Where the cigarettes at? I said, I don't know. I, I, ain't, I don't know nothing about no cigarettes. He, you smell like cigarettes. You've been smoking cigarettes. Let me see your fingertips. And I told you, when you would break them down and roll them up, your fingertips would be brown from where you smoke them to the clip, right? Let me see your fingertips. I'm like, shit, I'm caught when I show him my fingertips. I show him, he's like, yeah, you've been smoking, you've been smoking. Come on, step over here beside the door and stand here. So he sends his two officers in there. They tear the cell up. Ain't like we got a whole lot, it's jail. But they go through everything. They don't find nothing. As I'm standing at the door, I look over like, you know what I mean, just cut my eyes around the room, look over my Puerto Rican homeboys. They're not even looking at me, not looking in my direction. They over there laughing, joking in the corner, doing what they're going to do, right? Guards come on down to tell and walk off, go to walk off, and I'm thinking, damn, they ain't find it. Dude was right. That's a good hiding spot. White shirt tells them, no, 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 no. Come here, come here. Crawl up underneath that bunk and look in that back corner now. Crawl up underneath the bunk. It's a good size office he's talking to. This ain't a big spot he's got to crawl under. It's a metal bunk mounted to the wall, right? Maybe a foot, foot and a half off the floor. Ah, he takes his flashlight, crawls up underneath there. And shines a light. There's two packs of cigarettes and a lighter. Takes them. Slides them out from underneath the bunk. Slides the lighter out, right? Who's these belong to? Don't need the me or my celly say nothing. And my celly's been smoking with me now. This is my new celly, right? So the basic rules is. If it's something I do and it's just me. Then just I take the trip. But if something both of us been doing. We both keep our mouth closed. And we both take the trip, right? My celly right from the gate. That ain't mine. That ain't mine. That ain't mine. Well, are you saying it's his? Look, man, I said I ain't mine. Y'all can put two and two together. If it ain't mine, it's got to belong to somebody. I just stand there. It's George. I said, man, that shit must have been in the cell when we moved in here. Pull the bed log up. How long has William been in the cell? They tell him, he's been in here a couple months now. And, uh, yeah, yeah, ain't no way you ain't find that while cleaning the cell. You'd have been all up under that bunk. You know every nook and cranny in the cell. You would have found them cigarettes. They yours. They belong both of y'all. Y'all going to the hole. Packed us up. Off to the hole we went, right? Never came back to that pod. Never seen them Puerto Rican dudes again. But I learned a valuable lesson. Dudes will let you eat with them. They'll kick it with you. You can get in on whatever they got going on. As long as it benefits them in some way. They didn't take no loss that day. The guard that was bringing them those cigarettes in, they knew him from around the way. You know what I mean? He was probably just doing that on the strength of that girl would walk across the street, give him $20, he bring two packs of cigarettes in. They make a couple thousand dollars off these packs of cigarettes. And this is an everyday thing. I learned that day that everybody that smiles at you ain't your friend. Everybody that lets you play their little reindeer games don't necessarily want you to be ahead of the sleigh. Watch the company you keep. Somebody approaches you like that, even in the real world, that wouldn't usually be around you, ask yourself, why is this dude coming to me? What does he want? What does he stand to gain? Based off of what I'm seeing, what do I stand to lose? I ended up losing good time, spending more time in jail, Quite a while in the hole. Eventually I was released in the hole. Went back to population. Kept my mouth shut. I was a solid dude. You know, dudes flew me a kite and said, hey, good looking. I'm not saying anything. If you need anything, holler at us, let us know. I didn't never get back with him. I don't need anything else for y'all. I was y'all's fall guy. I was young, dumb, fresh in the system, and didn't take the advice. Of someone that tried to give me the game. Now I've told y'all before. I'm not gang. I'm not gang gang. I'm not gang affiliated. I'm not a gang member. I did kick it with different gangs while I was in prison. A lot of that had to do with being the tattoo man. A lot of it had to do with me being there a long time. And everybody knowing me. So if you want to say I was affiliated. Through knowing people. Then you'd have to say I was affiliated with Crips. I was affiliated with Bloods. I was affiliated with MS-13s. You'd have to say I was affiliated with all the gangs because 
I didn't have just any one gang that I kicked it with. Never did that. Had several opportunities to become a gang member. Had dudes push up on me countless times. Jay, we'll come in the cell, we'll run the fade, blah, 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 bring you home. You'll be this or you'll be that. Nah, I'm good, man. I always turned it down. I'm solo dolo. I'm Jay every day. I don't need no gang. Y'all got what y'all got going on. I got enough problems of my own. Much less joining y'all's gang. And now I inherit the beef that y'all create every single day. This is going to end bad. I'm going to go home on gang probation. I'm going to go home. Have to report to dudes in the streets. Yeah, nah, I think I'll pass, man. I'm going to go home and uh, be successful and be somebody and not have to go home and return to a, a life of crime, live a crime style, or, you know, have any of that going on. So I always decline. Now, I can't speak for other states. I can't because I'd be wrong. But I can speak for Virginia. And what I do know about Virginia's prison systems is you can be white and be a crip. You can be white and be GD. You cannot, in the state of Virginia, be a white blood. It is not going to happen. I've never seen it. I've seen dudes come in claiming that they were blood, they were white, and just get damn near murdered in there. Hurt so bad that, you know, a year from now they can still feel the pains of of the beatings or whatever they took that day. Now in the state of Virginia, we got what we call powder puffs. That's what we would call the white dudes that couldn't be blood, but hung out with nothing but bloods. I didn't make the name up. I don't know where the name came from, but they used to call the dudes powder puffs, right? I've seen a lot of different situations where the white dudes would flock up with the bloods be all around them, walking the yard with them, eating with them, doing this, doing that, but they're not blood. And I almost, I'm not going to say every time, but the majority of the time, all the rest of us standing around saw what was going on. If this white dude was chilling with all these bloods, they would go to his cell when they needed something and just grab it. Hey, we're a couple of soups short on this meal. We're going to let you get in. And they go in his cell and grab a summer sausage a cheese, two soups, and a tuna. They grab different commissary items. If they needed something taken in off the yard, instead of getting one of theirs in trouble, they called a white dude. Hey, come here, man. Come here, come here, come here. Hey, homeboy, take this in for me. Why do you think he's got you taking it in? He's got you taking it in because he doesn't want to take the risk of getting caught, right? We have this tall-ass white dude that when he gets there, he kind of mingles around and you'll do that trying to find where you fit in who you're going to kick it with got an older guy for a cellmate that minds his business you know doesn't get into anything does his daily routine like he's been doing for 25 30 years i don't know how long the man had been locked up like been locked up as long as he had been alive this tall white guy starts hanging out with these blood dudes don't know how he got his introduction don't know how he got his foot in the door, but I do know that he went from just mingling around from this person to that person to kicking it with nothing but bloods, right? He still got years before he goes home, six, seven years before he goes home. And a lot of these blood dudes he kicks it with are getting out in the next few years. Some of them are getting out in the next few months. Well, the prison I'm at at the time, we had phones on the rec yard. And you, they had, the phones were spaced maybe 18 inches apart. And it was four phones. And you could get up on top of the phone booths, these metal square phone booths. And you could do dips off of them, work out off of them, right? So we're doing dips on the phone one day. White dude comes over there. And he's got like five, six blood dudes with him. And he's on the phone. And I overhear him saying, are you sure everything's good with his home plan? The people can come by and check, like, make sure the house is straight. It's my homeboy. He's going to be staying there. Then he's going to move. You know what I mean? Like I told you, blah, blah, blah. Prior to getting released here in the state of Virginia, you have to have what's called a home plan. They're not just letting you back out on the streets so that you can just go 
commit the life of crime, I have no chance of hope. They want to know that you have somewhere to go. So they're going to go by the address you give them. Usually within 90 days, you getting out. They're going to walk through the house, verify there is space for you, look around and be nosy, make sure there's no criminal activity going on, not a whole bunch of people hanging out. They don't care if it's a bad neighborhood, just as long as none of the things that don't fit their criteria, as long as none of those things aren't in place. So I guess she tells him, yeah, everything's good. Short time later, the dude that was standing there with him goes home. This guy, this blood dude, is now staying at the Powder Puffs girlfriend's house. Shacked up in there. Got a room there. All these different things going on. He starts telling other dudes, and like I told you, none of this shit's a secret. You always hear what's going on. That the dude wants his girl to go purchase a gun for him. She's not a convicted felon. Ain't never been in no trouble. He wants her to go in the gun store and get him a gun. That's what happens. She goes and gets him a gun. Now, they don't keep records. They keep records, but at the time, if, say, in... You go somewhere and three months from now, I get released and I use that address also. The chances of us having the same probation officer are slim to none. The chances that the person goes by in three, four months from now to that same address for my home plan. The chances of that being the same person that went last time are slim to none. They're not going to catch it in the system that, hey, there's two guys that got released that both went to this, this address couple months goes by another one of his homeboys gets released and is now staying at his girl's house he's talking to the main dudes one day the blood dudes and he's telling them man try to get them to chill out man like she's saying the cops been called a couple different times like they're wilding out man there's all types of people in the house like and dudes more or less just they're not gonna do nothing about it you know what i mean that, that's what it is that's my homeboys their blood, they there. When you're not gonna tell us what to do with them, they gonna do what the fuck they want to do at your girl's house, without saying that. It's pretty much how they come across, right? We fast forward a year. These two dudes are still staying with dudes' girl. Dudes are clowning. Man, you know dudes dropping all inside your girl. Dudes gotta be deep up inside your girl. Man, you really believe these two dudes are staying there? All they homeboys is coming through, and ain't nobody smashing. Man, my girl wouldn't do that. My girl wouldn't do that. My girl wouldn't do that, right? The house ends up getting raided on the street. Something happens, I guess, from the gang activity. Everybody being there all the time. All the different cops being called. The cops end up raiding the house. And through the course of raiding and separating it, separating everybody, they find drugs. They find guns that are registered in this girl's name that she's bought. For these guys that just got out of prison. These two dudes, right? And it's set up for more guys to go to this guy's girlfriend's house. When they get out and stay there, right? Like I told you, he's still got years before he goes home. But, wants to fit in. But, shorty wants to be a thug. He's trying to do something he ain't got no business doing. Should have been over there with his ass sat down somewhere. And he wouldn't have none of these problems. They get everybody downtown. Start questioning the girl. And the girl goes ahead and tells him. And the boy, the dude, the boyfriend's been lying. He's been telling her the whole time that he's a blood. He ain't telling her, I'm pretty much one of their flunkies. They use me. I just kick it with them for protection. He tells her, I'm a blood. So she tells the police, my boyfriend's in prison. He's a blood. These are his homeboys from prison. It wasn't never supposed to be like that. They asked me to buy them the guns. They said I couldn't get in no trouble. Yeah, I knew they were selling drugs, but I didn't think I could get in no trouble because I wasn't selling no drugs. I hadn't done anything wrong. Just like that, the two dudes that got released, they're now on their way back to prison. Whole pile of charges, drug charges, gun charges, um, gang-related charges because they're hanging out with other active gang members, probation violations, both of them. And kiss your ass goodbye. You're going to be gone until November. You're about to take the midnight train to Georgia. You used to the long haul, the red eye flight. You are out of here. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Do not get out of jail free. Your ass is done. You're going back to prison. And you're going to be with Mr. Powderpuff here soon, right? 
middle of the night one night, and he hasn't heard anything about what's going on. He's been calling home, and nobody's answering the phone. And that's because the house is full of police. Police ain't going to answer, answer your house phone and speak to nobody. So he's calling, man, something's wrong, man. Ain't nobody answering the phone, calling, calling, calling. Later that night, they come in, and they start shaking his cell down. He was young and dumb like I was once. Except he was a whole different level of dumb. All the gang knowledge, like the gang members would keep what they call their knowledge. They would keep paperwork on certain dudes, literature on the gang, drawings, patterns for tattoos, kites that have been passed, all just handwritten gang information, right? In a folder. They all had knives. But when this girl told the police her boyfriend was a gang member, they asked, What's your boyfriend's name? They call up to the, the police, call up to the Department of Corrections, fill them in that one of their inmates has been given his home address, his girlfriend's home address, for other known gang members to go to and to go search his cell. They go search his cell and he had been holding everything. They find a cache of gang literature, a cache of this, a cache of that, and a whole bunch of different weapons. They took that dude up out of there and shipped his ass. I've told you before, you go to the mountains, and when I say you go to the mountains, that means you're going to a higher level prison, way off in the middle of nowhere, eight, nine hours away from civilization, from where you live, from any major city. You're going up to, you know, towards Wise County, West Virginia. Big Stone Gap, Virginia. Places where the women grow mustaches. And if you don't work in the prison, you work in the coal mines. Places where most houses have, a, you know, a hog running around in the yard or some farms of chickens outside. Country, mountain-ass places. All the mother gang dudes went right back to their regular business. I've seen many more come after that dude and take his place. He wanted to fit in. He thought them dudes really messed with him and that they were really his friends. And no sooner than he left, I heard them all clowning him. I heard them all joking on him. You know what I mean? Making fun of his name. Two of their homeboys then went to jail. They didn't say nothing bad about them. Damn, man, that's messed up, man. We got to see what we can do about getting lawyers up for them. Nobody gave a shit about his girl. Nobody gave a shit about the whole cachet of weapons he got caught with. All the gang literature he just caught with. And the fact that he's now about to go on the gang list and the rest of his bid, he's going to be labeled a gang member. That when he gets to where he's going and word gets out that the guards think he's a blood, not only is he going to be treated differently by the staff because now he's STG, security threat group. But he's also going to have bloods at other compounds that don't know nothing about what happened at the last compound that thinks he's claiming to be blood. They're going to end up messing his ass up for false flag. I told you, it always is bad. Now, everything about that last story was just stupid. I left a lot out. Dude wasn't the only one that ended up in trouble. All that paperwork they found in his cell ended a whole lot of them dudes up on their indictments. Gang recruitment, things of that nature, those are, it's against the law. It's shit you can't be doing. A whole lot of stuff they shouldn't have found out Department of Corrections, state police found out. Kites from institutions, other institutions. Letters from the streets that came in that had details on crimes in it. Were all located in his cell. So he caught charges. A whole bunch of other guys caught charges. And a whole bunch of guys, ultimately, I watched over a course of a couple months. As they would just come in randomly when they pinpointed exactly who they were talking about in that letter. What's his nickname? Oh, that's him right there. So it was a major downfall. A whole lot of dudes went away, and all he wanted to do was fit in. He thought those were being, you know, those dudes were being legit, and those were his friends. You've got to know when to say no. Secondly, don't ever drag your family into anything that you got going on while locked up. Don't do that. Who in their right mind would send a bunch of dudes that he met in prison home 
to be around his family members. It ain't like they're all there because they're spelling bee champions. It ain't like they're all there because, you know, they got trophies for being good people. These are men that have committed crimes. Don't mean they're bad people, but chances are, you know, not the type of people you want to surround your family with, especially if they're still into that lifestyle while incarcerated. I've seen a lot of dumb shit, a lot of dumb things transpire. A lot of dudes get used. I was young with the cigarette story, and I learned right there and right there. Don't take nothing. Don't bar nothing. Don't hold nothing. And always question what the next man's motive is. This dude ain't just over here talking to me because he's bored. This dude don't want to just smoke these cigarettes with me because he wants to smoke them with me. Why would he want to why would he want to share something that's so coveted in here that's worth so much money that everybody wants with me? Cuz I'm a cool guy. Maybe I am a cool guy, but I ain't that damn cool. And you better believe that was 22 years ago. I ain't that damn dumb. Anyways, it is Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. We are at work. On the grind. Steadily getting it. Want to do a video for y'all real quick. I've missed y'all. I love y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. But anyway, these jails, institutions, penitentiaries, detention centers, are all just crazier worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in and as always y'all know what i'm doing i'm just trying to keep y'all entertained are you not entertained and like always this is jay williams let's live life to all my real ones and the awesome real ones watching because you're still watching me and y'all know how we do salute